Charlie, we all set? Okay. Uh, next application, please. Number one, Pond Lane, LLC, and Hawkwoods. Let the record reflect that uh, uh, sitting in attorney uh, Bruin is recusing himself from the application uh, just for uh, transparency and that there will be no issues of uh, conflicts of interest. Um, is the applicant present? We have nothing. Nothing for it. Um, at last meeting, we, uh, Zach gave a spirited presentation um, over uh, the, the saving of, a, uh, of this particular structure. Um, I stated in the last meeting, I, I had no objection to the application as submitted. Um, I, didn't, I didn't believe that this particular building rose to the level of designation. Um, it's not currently a, uh, a contributing structure within the historic district and think that um, it would be a lot, for me, it would take a lot more for it to rise to that occasion. More um, spirit? <laughs> even with the spirit that you put in and uh, all the time and effort and, and appreciate your research, um, not very often I, I uh, vote against or not ha hinder some of your, your uh, recommendations, but on this one I just can't see myself agreeing with it. Um, Christine, what your comments? I agree with you. Um, I'm sad, but I agree. Susan, any comments? All right, I'll miss it, but it's not a good example of what Zach was talking about. Jeff? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll state my position, although in terms of um, uh, the majority, it's not going to ch change the vote, but I, I, it's important for me just to share something with the, with the public. As I said to you folks the last time, this is a difficult situation in as much as you were very forthright, your, app, um, your representative, in saying that your desire was, if at all possible, to maintain the, this property. Uh, however, to facilitate the sale of it, uh, you wanted <coughs> us to approve a certificate of appropriateness <coughs> to demolish it. Um, and what's difficult for me is one recognizing, uh, well, and then Zach last, last time presented uh, very effective repurposing uh, of such buildings. So that in theory, it could be repurposed. And perhaps there is a buyer out there that would repurpose it. Um, and so then I, I said, I was looking for guidance. And for us, the guidance is found in the code. And the uh, code in the historic district begins with the protection, enhancement, and perpetuation of landmarks in historic districts. It goes on to talk about protecting and enhancing landmarks, uh, fostering civic pride in the accomplishments of the past. So I find myself um, bet betwixt and between in recognizing the limitations on this facility and at the same time um, not being able to see what would replace it. Your representative said that we would have a second chance to look at that when a new, when an acquirer came in for a proposal. And that's well and good, but what we don't get a second chance on is once that property is demolished, it's gone forever. So I would either abstain or vote not to demolish it. Uh, and leaving you the option of selling it with, on a conditional basis. But again, it's... What would be your would reason be, for abstaining? What would you be your guide? Because I, I don't think it's the board's position to uh, facilitate the uh, incremental revenue and return. Let the record reflect that this board, <laughs> unless it's an application of hardship, which is the right. only precedent, which is the only process, the procedure we look at a financial gain or loss right. in any particular uh, right. transaction. We're looking at this individually and independent of the applicant's exactly. willingness or their intent to sell. So I, we're I not expediting it so they can sell it. We're not creating. That. We're I'll not creating a, a right. platform for them to have a better sale. It's is it a contributing structure within a historic district? And, and I said it as part of record. Mm -hmm. This. Currently, is not a contributing structure within the historic right. district. It will require us to make it such, right. and I don't think it rises to the level of. And I, I fully understand. I fully understand what you're both I saying. And were it not for the fact that the original representative made that a point of the application, 
not you, John, I know. Um, but they made that a point of the application. So, uh, yes, and we could go back. But it, it, it's a moot point. All I'm saying is philosophic, philosophically, I don't think we should be put in that position. And that was a position that was requested of us by the original representative. I agree. Okay. I agree. All right. Okay. Um, therefore, is there any public comment on the application as we proceed? All right, then I will set the uh, motion um, motion to uh, close the application for written decision by council on uh, One Pond Lane LLC. Uh, second. Uh, second by Christina. Um, the consensus of the board is to approve the certificate of appropriateness uh, for the ap applicant. Um, it was second by Christina. All in favor, Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? I would be nay. And I'm an aye. Thank you. Next um, application, please. Our next application is David Hewlin on 81 Little Plains. I do bring in Bruin. Wayne? Okay. Is David Hewlin here? Different guy? Yeah. Is this a different person? Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. Um, Christopher Stoddard with Harrison Design Architects. I'm here with Jack Priolo, Harrison Design, representing David Hewlin, the applicant. Um, this is our third time before the board. We have um, come back and forth on a few points, um, all, of, all of which but one are kind of still on the table. And we'd like to present to you the changes that we made for um, this hearing tonight. I uh, just would like to recap a little bit of what has happened in the past few hearings, and also uh, Matthew Korn, who presented to you the last few hearings, is not here because of a medical condition, so I'll be presenting on behalf of Harrison Design and David Ewell. Um, so in December, we uh, submitted our first submission, um, where the comments of the board uh, led us to remove a second story balcony from the rear of the house, and the uh, a, a large comment then was also the windows on the front elevation in which um, in January we came back with a slightly revised version, which in hindsight was not revised to uh, appease the board far enough. And now we're back with an alternate version, which is on this elevation. I'm also going to pass out a rendered version of, that, of the submitted drawings that you have in front of you. Yes, here's the all of these plans you're submitting it today have not, those have not been seen as of yet. This is just a color rendering of what we have Correct. in the file. No changes, no alterations. No changes. Um, the plans that we have in file were dated and received on February 1st, 2018. Yes. This is just a larger with the same one on the board below. Um, the windows we've been talking about are these taller windows that are on the front elevation in a uh, stair tower. Um, previous comments of the board have been that they stood out too much and were in the same character of the rest of the house. Um, in this submission, we've moved the lower windows up to abut the, um, the midline band that creates this gambrel roof here. And then the upper windows were shortened, and now the um, that midline band is no longer broken as it was in the previous two submissions. Um, so much better. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. That, and so I, I imagine David is ecstatic. <laughs> okay. So much better. Um, I, and it's, still, like it's still able to achieve the necessary lighting that you're looking for for the staircase. There's no issues. And, and that this is exactly what we were talking about, creating that band in between the window and shortening it. I th think you did a great job. So um, Jeff, do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, Susan, I agree. Do you have any comments? No, it's, mu it's so much better. It's astounding. Yes, Thank you very much. Right. Well, I'm glad that it, I think it's definitely an improvement from the first submission. And um, I, I do apologize a little bit that the last time we came before the board, we didn't make enough of a change. But I think well, everybody's happy now. The, you got there now. Um, I do have a couple other uh, things that I want to point out on the uh, submission of this 
this month. Okay. Um, and one one additional piece of information that um, was brought to our attention by the mm -mm. building inspector. Um, minor, and I think it, it will be to the benefit of the board as well. I'm going to pass out a revised rendered landscape plan dated, um, well this was actually produced today, so I'm hoping it's dated today. The, the latest date on it is February 6th, but the rendering was done today. Um, the only change compared to the, the plan you have on file okay. is this uh, parking spur on the North Street, Burnett Street. Um, it was brought to our attention by the building inspector uh, after our recent submission that by code we had to screen this parking and it could not be directly accessed from Burnett Street without being um, separated from the street by screening. So we have added this parking spur at the, at the direction of the building inspector. Um, again, there's screening that was added from the last submission. And I just wanted to point that out to the board. Again, this is um, a cobblestone, a cobblestone edged um, driveway with a, a gravel inlay, so it does not contribute to lock coverage. So you have two dry, you have two driveway areas. One that access to your garage. Yes. And then front parking. Correct. The the reason for the amount of parking spaces provided is to meet the requirements of the um, the, bedroom. the building code by bedrooms. Mm. Well, this is really the building There's not a lot of ground. Right. There's a lot of pavement. Okay. You have comments, uh, Susan? There's, a, there's not a lot of grass. There's a lot of pavement in here. It's, but, it's gravel in by uh, the Right, Code right. of Southampton does not contribute to lock coverage. Uh, Jeff, any comments? Um, uh, similar. Uh, unfortunately, this is one of the unintended consequences of the change in the uh, parking laws that was voted in a year or so ago, which at that trustees meeting was intended to have people reduce the number of bedrooms because they would not want to have as much uh, graveled space. but. People still want the bedroom, so therefore they're going to create more gravel space. It was a, a well-intended, but uh, um, well-intended effort. But these are the consequences: lack of green space. Christine, comments? Yeah, I mean, obviously the landscaping was driven by the amount of parking we needed, and this is what we have. That's it. I think everyone, every one of the board members, pretty much voiced their concern, uh, same sentiment. Uh, it's one of those situations where it's unavoidable, it's, it's necessary, um, and hopefully we can tighten that up for future applications. Are you signing that? Uh, no, because it's historic district. Oh. Is there any public comment on the application? Board members, do you have any issues with the application closed for a written decision? No, no. I appreciate the changes you made. Okay. Therefore, the, um, uh, just so that you understand, the property is located in the historic district and therefore requires written decision by council. So at this time, we'll close the application. The next meeting, our written decision will be prepared or ready. Um, you don't necessarily have to be here, only if you wish to be here to pick it up. Um, and then we'll have that at our next meeting. And that, at that time, it will be approved. Any questions? Yes, with respect to the uh, certificate of appropriateness for de uh, demolition. Um, or I'm not sure where we stand. It's with a complete that. application. Therefore, the approval is certificate of, uh, certificate of appropriateness to demo, okay. and written decision to uh, for the application that's been uh, uh, understood. Unfortunately, I guess the, the in hindsight, the easier process prior would have been to go for the certificate of appropriateness to demo, and then go over the application. However. This is a complete application, so therefore, both will be handled in the written decision by our council. Now, when is the next hearing that this is? Two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Oh, two weeks. Any questions? That's all. All right. Uh, motion to close for written decision by council. I make a motion that we close the application of David Hewlin on Little Plains Road for written decision by our council. Motion by Christina. Is there a second? I second the motion. Second motion by uh, Susan. All in favor. Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm Susan? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. What's that?
Next application. Oh, wait, we have to give this back to that yes. file? Yes. Yeah. And that's an older one. Though, it's right? still. Right. Are we going here? Endless. Fifty-two percent. Okay. Your name, <laughs> your name for the record, please. <laughs> Melissa Dedovich, Peconic Environmental Associates. Here with Matt from uh, Matt Howard from LaGuardia yeah. Design. Okay, so this is uh, property located at 436 Gin Lane, driveway gates. If the uh, Charlie, it's there you go. okay. We got Sorry, Charlie. Um, so the transparency has been increased to 52 percent. Uh, what is the actual height of the uh, closed panel area below? The mid rail is at three feet nine inches. Three feet, great. Any lanterns? Any any type? No lanterns on top of the pillars. The pillars are made out of brick. Brick. Uh, what kind of brick? Whitewash brick to match the loge on the house. Excellent. Okay. And the height of the fence at this peak? Um, Alright. <laughs> on here. Right here. Right over here. Yep. Right over Seven here. Seven feet. Seven feet. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, any comments? No, I appreciate the changes Melissa made. Susan? No problem. Christina? No. Nope. All right, and I have no comments. Is there any public comment on the application? No. As mentioned before, the, the property is located within the historic district and therefore requires written decision. So we'll close the application for written decision at our next meeting. Thank you. A motion to close the application for written decision by council. I make a motion that we close the application of Halcyon Lodge for their driveway gates for written decision by our council. A motion by Christina. Sir, a second. I second the motion. Second the motion by Susan. All in favor, Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm aye as well. Uh, the next application is closed already for written decision by council. Um, the board member Jeff uh, recognized that. I'm sorry? Uh, recognized that there was a, a correction that was uh, needs to be amended in the second page, uh, basically reflecting that there is no gas lamp or gas type lantern. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, Can we just ask council. But is that correct? Yeah, I think there was a representation made at Jeff's request that there be no gas. Right. Uh, right. Okay. And so the applicant agreed. Right. I just want to make sure yes. that that's the case. So on the second page, I just want to make sure it's on the record. Uh, there's a reference that the gas lamp or glass t uh, type lamp will surmount the uh, squared columns. That was a finding. So that is going to be removed in a note that the gas lamp or gas type lamps were withdrawn by the applicant. Mm -hmm. Okay. True. Okay. Thank With you. that amendment, you, you would make that. Uh, I believe the decision follows everything that this board has found and looking to determine. All right, therefore, the, uh, the approval would be a motion to approve written decision by council with the nece necessary amendment to eliminate the gas lantern, gas type uh, lamp uh, as part of the written decision. Second. Okay, it's been uh, motioned by myself, second by Christina. All in favor, Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm nice well. Next application. Uh, next application is Five Chimneys, LLC, at 471 Hill Street. Sorry, Zach. That's okay. Did that change? I mean, all the Your need to be recognized, but your name for the record. record. Brian Brady, architect yeah. for Five Chitons. Say to our former board member, welcome back. It's nice to see you. Thank you. It's a little strange being on this side of the table. <laughs> for us as well. Okay. 
Please proceed. I'm, uh, I'm going to need a copy of the renderings I gave you to then. This property is located on a private road, 471 Hill Street. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the property. Um, it's Barbara Missett's prior house, in case anybody's interested. Um, this structure is a really, really, really unique structure. Um, I don't know if you've ever been inside it. So the preservation of this structure is more about the inside than the outside. The structure itself is stucco with beautiful lead pane windows, which you can see in the rendering. So what I'd like you to do is walk you through the elevations and point out the changes that I've made. If you look at the rendering for a minute, Could you help us uh, just trying to get more orientation on the property where this structure is? This structure is. You have the site plan there? Yes. Set it flat. Mm, yeah. This way. No, the other way. Oh, whichever. Yeah. I think you can go either way. There you go. Okay, so Hill Street is up here. 465 is in front, and this is the private road that winds back. Actually, it's the other way. So it's right at the bend in the private road. So I want to orient you with this interior elevation. From here to here on the property, this whole part is this two-story space. So this entire house is a one-bedroom house. Wow. So that was what makes the challenge of it. Because in order to preserve this house and make it more useful, we have to add on to it. So if we go back to the site plan, where we're gonna be adding on is to the east. There's a pool to the north, there's a front yard to the south. So that's the only place we can add on. What are the dimensions of the add-on? They are... Uh, 18 by 30. No. Did I read that? I'm sorry, 18 by 20. 18 by 20. Yeah. And there's an external stairway that goes down, I'm assuming, to... Yes, the, the house is really in structurally really poor condition, and it was in jeopardy of being torn down. My clients, fortunately, are preservationists, and they live in the front house. So they pursued this opportunity, and I'll introduce them to you after I speak, because I'd like you to hear some of their story. But you can see, see the collar ties across the top of this? They're all reinforced now with steel. This house is really, really falling down. So that's why we're lifting it, putting a new foundation in, shoring it up, and making it structurally sound. And lifting it, is it gonna change or shift any of the grade, or is it, does it have to be? It is, the back of the house is in the dirt right now, so we're bringing it up eight inches. Eight inches. It was the total height of the house after the, the high, at its highest peak? Um, it is 21 feet 6 inches. All right, so you're 200 yeah, it, it, eight, two, near 220 feet back. Right. And you have a 28 foot high home. No one will ever see this thing. No. And if you've been there, you can't see it now anyway. No, you can't see it. It's all completely hedged. But completely even if it wasn't, I think that you balanced the uh, the addition well. I think you 
Queen. Yeah, I stepped it down, lowered stepped the roof, down, made it reset. Small dormers. Yes. Um, I have no objection to the application, even if I could see it. We are so lucky that they are presenting it and having to do it. Yeah. Susan, it is not a contributing structure. It's in a Stark district. Um, not through a the, cupola, maybe. the cupola on it was really to get rid of the skylights. There are six skylights in the back of the house. So we're taking them out in order to get light in. We, I added a cupola. Jeff, any comments? Um, no, I, I think, yes. I shouldn't say, <laughs> preface it by saying no. Uh, the design is respectful of, of the house. Uh, and I thought historically, wasn't this owned by an artist at one point? Or maybe? It, it is it was an art studio, yeah. Um, so, I mean, but it's on the 1902 map. So before it was an art studio, maybe it was a barn or something because it's stucco. You know, I don't know. The design seems to be respectful of the house. Any other comments? No. Susan. I don't have any comments. <laughs> any public comment? Good evening. Hi, good evening. Um, Madeline Van John representing um, Ann and John Pine, who are the neighbors to the east. Um, I don't want to get into the whole, all the details. I just want to say we did submit a letter. We're just concerned about the parking because um, it all seems to be provided in the right of way, um, which they have some concerns about. There's been issues with parking in the past. We just wanted to make sure that's looked at. So I just want to say that for the record. Um, and although it's not a contributing structure, it does have historical significance. So we just want to make sure that does get looked at carefully. Um, to that end, Mrs. Pine has some some uh, remarks about the architectural details she'd like to present. Oh, is she presenting it? Uh, yes, yeah, yes. But I, you know, the parking was an issue because when Barbara was sick, I used to take her home, and it was so hard mm -hmm. to drive around in there. Right. They, um, my clients own the right of way or oh, the, the yeah. private road. So they do have deeded parking on the sides, but there was also, when Barbara subdivided the back of it, created a parking area behind it that is actually in front of Bob Pressman's oh. space. So well, there's parking there, there and parking there and there. It is tight. It, okay. it is tight. The, the, the spot that's really tight on the parking is right in the, the corner on the turn, which has two spots. And I, I went in there today and with my little Subaru, uh, I took up at least half of it, so a big suburban would not fit in there with another car. Um, I'm assuming the building department has the building department has reviewed it. Reviewed they it. asked our surveyors to to do a fire truck turn oh. to make sure because the new house, the Gary house in the back, right. is large, right, and so it requires a bigger truck. So all of that's been worked out. Okay. So the fire department part, has reviewed this. Is that part of the landscape plan that you're proposing, showing the the uh, to now the new egress uh, the width showing the fire truck. It's the survey is in the file. Okay. Okay, that shows it. All right. Miss Pine, you have comments? Oh yeah. Um I I'm Ann Pine, uh, the neighbor to uh, the immediate east. Uh, I, I know parking isn't your issue, but it, there is no way that those two spaces on an easement can be negotiated. Uh, someone else will have to investigate that, but... Uh, Got John here. <laughs> well, I don't think you're a, a parking... I, I didn't come before here to talk about parking. But uh, having lived there a long time, there was a parking issue with the Garys. There's, con there's two r sharp right turns. Uh, there's no way that picture, it, it could possibly be accurate, especially if you push the parking five feet off our property line. Is there something specific about the architecture you want to discuss? Oh, yes. I, I just, that was a surprise to me that it had all been cleared. I, I only want to talk about the architecture. Okay. Uh, and the history, because it's not a contributing property. That's so correct. I think it's important that it is established, um, this historic importance is established. Because as you know, the historic properties went straight along Hill Street. They never stepped back to the, the, the second tier. 
So it was a studio built by Marshall Fry between 1910 and 1916. It does not appear on the 19 cent, uh, 1910 map. It does appear on the 1916 map in exactly the same shape as it is now. It was not ever in shape or use a carriage house. So I, I would ask Brian uh, to correct that label on his drawing. Uh, if there was a carriage house on this lot, which we talked about a couple years ago, it was uh, uh, the fourth structure back, and it was demolished three years ago. Uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, despite it not being a contributing property, uh, it is basically has its integrity as it was built. There is a Palladian uh, on the north face. There are skylights and a Palladian uh, addition that are easily removable that were probably in the 1970s. Uh, but aside from that, I think it's in very intact, original condition. Um, uh, its significance to the village is far more important than its age, which is 101 to 108 years old, and I think it's only 50 years old that demands uh, a historic uh, investigation. Uh, uh, are, you, are you objecting to the design as, as being submitted? Uh, let me just go through this, and then... I'm objecting to articles of the design, but I also want to put on the record that it is a serious historic, material historic important thing to Southampton Village as a studio. Okay? okay. I just want to go through it because I didn't totally hear that. Uh, it's an architectural survival of what I would call the artist colony architecture as practiced in the art village by Grosvenor Atterbury and Catherine Budd. It's an example of the stucco-style building of Donnelly and Corrigan, who built, within a year of this property's being built, the National Docklands of America, St. John's Church, the Village Hall, and the two Corrigan homes, which are, were contiguous to it for 50 or 60 years. Um, so I think it's uh, in, in the important style of the, of the art village, and I think it was built by an important builder in Southampton, the Corrigan family. Uh, Marshall Fry was a founder of the <coughs> William Mary Chase Southampton Shinnecock Hills Summer Art Studio, which closed in 1902. It is reasonable to me that he built this studio to continue to teach his own students and his own work. This was a plein air, I'm sure you all know this, a form of painting. He wasn't painting in this studio. He probably was instructing. Uh, but the natural light was where everyone painted. These buildings, and I, I'm going to pass this out to you, all had very dim lighting. Everything in 1910 in the arts and crafts bungalow style was a part of being interiority, coziness, big fireplaces, and very small windows, sure. no matter how big the structure was. Okay. Uh, Just bear one second, okay? You need water? Sorry, no, allergy. Okay. Uh, characteristics of the property uh, back this up that is similar to structures by Grover Atterbury and Ka Catherine Budd uh, and the Corrigan houses. Uh, it's studios, low roof line, small leaded windows, large stone chimney, paneled interiors, which Donnelly and Corrigan were well known for. The characteristics are also visible in larger structures of that time designed by leading architects, William Mary Chase's house designed by McKim, Mead, and White, the Port of Missing Men designed by John Russell Pope, and the Ladd House on Dune Road designed by Peabody, Wilson, and Brown. Okay. It was the intention of all these structures, as small as the studio of Marshall Fry, or as large as the National Golf Links of America, that an arts and crafts atmosphere pervade, uh, which was driven by this desire, as I said, for intimacy, warmth, and an exclusion of natural light. Covered porches ensured this intimacy uh, on the first floor, small dormer windows on second floors, and large, low roofs. In order to enforce what I just said, I will distribute these photographs um, to all of you. They're not... They're not cases of, in, uh, of they're, they're atmospheric pictures. 
I'm, I'm just trying to. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're going to get to. I understand. I really appreciate. I see, you did, did a lot of homework and did a lot of research. Chairman Heisman, let me go on because then I know it's over. I'll never bring it up again. Let me just go through this. I understand that, but what we're, we're trying to do is we're trying to hear the the reasons for your objection so we can discuss Fine. those. those, but those I, need, I need you to see, understand this first. Well, we're, we're, are you doing, board members, okay. do you want to go through this application? No. Okay, with, I can with, skip it. I'm just going to ask the board members, am I going to make that decision? Jeff, do you want to go through the I, assessment? I, of, I, I think I'd... And in fairness, if you're I, I comfortable think, with this, I'm, I'll yeah, move on. I think this is a significant house. I do too. And so we're very respectful, and at least I am, and I, I, okay. and I know I speak for the fellow board members. We understand this house, we understand its age, we understand that while it may not be a co okay. contributing with a capital I, C, it's surely on. contributing with a small so, C. Um, Susan, do you want to continue on reading off the information? How much longer is it? Uh, I just wanted to make a one sentence about each one, but if you don't care, no. oh, yeah. we have oh. this. Yeah, we have you have it. Handle. Okay. So um, this is what I object to in the current architectural yeah, plan. Somewhere. I do not find the 14-foot uh, couple inches cupola characteristic of local architecture of arts and crafts. Such a cupola appears on none of the illustrations I provided you in, or in any other pictures I've seen. Maybe one out of 30 has a cupola. In particular, because of its scale, uh, the 11 four inch wide, uh, it looks as if it were a ventilating device for a factory. <coughs> its diamond pane windows are a notable attempt to falsely mimic historic styles. I've never seen diamond pane windows on a cupola. Second, the Romeo balcony and vertical strip of diamond pane doors on the north elevation are also non-historical. In addition, they make the north elevation seem oddly out of balance with the other windows on it. More importantly, they announce from the exterior there is a full second story beneath the low slung roof of the interior of the studio, which was intended to house a one-story studio. Modern use is, of course, necessary to have second stories, but exterior detailing should disguise this use rather than advertise it. I understand that is uh, that long strip is for fire access. I don't think it needs to be a door. It could be a window. And disregarding the inside of the, of the structure, which isn't any of our business, uh, the bedroom could be located elsewhere if that's a problem. Third, the railing on the east facade, similarly, the railing on the ground, similarly advertises something a turn of the century bungo arts and crafts style would not include, which is a apartment complex in the basement that can be assessed from the outside of the main studio. Is that clear to you? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Let's have a Bilco door. It looks like it's like just a cellar. <coughs> this looks like the entrance to a second apartment, which is out of context with the historical nature of this. Further, the entire elevation, the east elevation, is an unappealing replacement for what exists now as an appropriate front yard elevation. This is a front yard, a second front yard, albeit. Uh, and it's visible to the private road. Therefore, it should look like a front yard elevation. So I would suggest uh, the door that's there now be redone, modified, whatever, the windows modified, and a Bilco door lead down to the basement. But suggestion isn't my purview, I understand. But that elevation <coughs> doesn't look right to see as a front yard elevation, and it suggests a separate apartment downstairs, which is not part of the gestalt of a, a, a studio for an artist at the turn of the century. Most, most important, number four, the new addition is set back from the studio a mere foot, and the roof line of the new addition is lower than that of the studio by 18 inches. The effect of these small differences of measurement is to make the original studio difficult to differentiate from its proposed new section, and, and it changes the proportion of the studio in terms of the uh, ratio between width and height. 
The fourth objection is in clear opposition to one of these guidelines, uh, architectural, uh, architectural guidelines adopted in 2000, which uh, makes it very clear that additions should be subservient and easily separable and visually differentiated. So I would, I would not like, I would like to see that uh, north facade redone without the tall strip window uh, and the Juliet balcony. I would like to see the cupola removed and uh, I would like to see that railing at the side, uh, that, that east elevation replaced with a, a second front yard uh, door instead of something that looks like what it looks like. And I would like to see that wing set back as per your guidelines, not by one foot, which is barely visible, and, and 18 inches at the top. Thank you. I think the property has enough space to, to do those things. Thank you. You're welcome. Any additional public comment? OK. Wait one second. Well, before you, I know you have rebuttal. Uh, I'm just. Oh, okay. Just I just wanted. To, I wanted my clients to come up and talk before we had public comment. We didn't get that chance, so. Okay. Well, but let me just hear the other public comments since we already started or initiated. John. Yeah. Um, I had met with Dean. Name for the record, even though we John and Foster, Building Inspector, Southampton Village. Thank you. Um, I had met with uh, Dean McNamara, Fire Marshal, um, Brian Brady Architect, and the owners, respectfully. Uh, we went over what was required for that whole entry road that goes in and out. It, it had been calculated. It meets the fire code for getting a fire engine in, and Dean had taken a fire truck in there personally and tested it out. So it does meet fire codes for access, okay? Um, I'd just like to mention one more thing. If a habitable area were to be put in the basement, cellar area, whatever, uh, Bill Coldor does not feet, does not meet fire code for exit because even a, a kid could put a stick across it and somebody couldn't get out. So Bill doors are not permitted for exits out of a basement area. Just so you know. Thank you. Thank you. What, one of the questions. There is an interior staircase to the basement also. Yeah, but there's somebody who okay. has to be able to get out. Done. There is no basement. Sorry. We, we unfortunately can't, we, first of all, we can't get your comments on record, and John, you can be direct the comments this way. Um, we understand, we understand that, uh, and um, I think this board, um, I don't think we would ever replace a uh, decorative stairway going to a basement with a bill cool door. And <laughs> I, I just had a question on the parking. I'm glad, John, that a uh, practical test was, was done with the fire truck. And, I'm, and maybe this is a question of, of Brian as well, but I noticed the two parking spots over here. Yes. Uh, if, if they're exactly where they should be, I would imagine the truck can do it. But if they're out by a foot or two, it looks like there would be barely enough room. And so I'm, this is really a question, perhaps, of the building department and Brian as well. Is there not a way to move those onto the property, as opposed I, to being in, in the, in the uh, right of way? I had a suggestion of moving them maybe five feet minimum, just to, as you're saying, get the bumper in. Uh, but it does meet code. And yeah, it's just the, a, let the I, record I, also reflect yeah. that this board doesn't have no. discretion. No, I understand. I understand. But I think what we have here is an effort from the building department and the designers yeah. to try to do something that's workable. So I'm not arguing at that point. I'm just saying if, from a safety standard, especially yeah. given a nine bedroom house that is now the Geary property and the Pressman house yeah. was just sold and I, I forget how many bedrooms in there, four or five, you know, there's, the fire department needs access. And well, we, we would not want to find ourselves, there was a suburban sticking out here. So if, if five feet could be given onto the property, then I think 
Every, everybody would be fine. With three properties like that in the summertime, if one has a party and people are parked along the road, huh. then there you have a, a, a major problem. problem getting a fire truck in. So there, there's always something we have to look out for. So. Right, and, and to the extent we can minimize those, but it, it's, we, all, it's a better for all of us. We do, and we can make adjustments during construction. You know, we say, look, maybe move this in a little or whatever, right? So this may be something the, <laughs> the owners want to consider. Right, and they're willing to consider that. If you look at the survey that's in the file that was done by Squires Thanks, John. Home, you'll see the turn and the trucks, and you'll see we only need one parking spot. We have two dedicated above the property up here. So there's only one parking spot that we need. It's a four-bedroom house. And, you know, we have more than that, so. We're still spending far more time <laughs> in areas that we don't have yeah, the and purview to discuss. Board. So I don't want to uh, labor over the parking uh, concerns. It seems that the building department and the applicant are working together with fire inspectors. So therefore, uh, let's move on from the application. In terms of design, style, I think the, help, I think the home looks uh, uh, far better than it does currently. Um, I don't find there to be any, uh, first, first and foremost, let's just discuss the fact that the structure is not a contributing structure within the historic district. Right, right. We'll begin there. So uh, it doesn't measure to the level of designation for a contributing structure within the historic district. Therefore, um, I understand the, the, the history of the building and, and its, yeah. its artist colony and its, its use. However, um, I don't believe that the details or design should affect that or the applicant should have the ability to use his, his or her own imagination to develop this in the manner that they see fit and I think it's in keeping and I don't find it out of balance. Thank you. Um, the, the, oh, sorry. Go ahead. The, um, Before you do that, are we finished with public comment? I was going to go back to it, but oh, okay. Jeff was going. No, I, the, the, um, what seems a bit out of place to me, Brian, is the Julia balcony. Okay, let me give you some history. That's what's there now. Right, I see that, right, yeah. All right, so in order to get rid of that and provide a dormer there, because it's the only window in, in the bedroom, mm -hmm. I had to bring that roof down and make the dormer much, much smaller, and that has to be an egress window. And in order for it to be egress, it has to break that entire roof line. It has to be egress window by code. code? Because it's better. Okay. Did the rear elevation? Yeah. What, are you, what are your concerns about the uh, Juliet balcony? Uh, it's not. It, it just looked a little bit inconsistent with the lines that were existing before. Okay. If I let me turn this way. Okay. So. Oops. See oh, how. Other way, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm the other way for the uh, for the folks at home. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, if you look at the eave that's running through mm -hmm. there, that is not the floor of the second floor. The floor of the second floor is actually down right. where those dotted lines are. So in order for me to get an egress window in there by code, mm -hmm. I need to break that whole eave. Mm -hmm. and, and to gracefully break the eave, I felt a door was more appropriate. Okay. It's not a balcony you can go out on, it's just adding as much light as we can get in there. Any more public comment? <laughs> Brian, you wanted your clients? Hmm? Did you want yes. your clients to I'm speak not in love with the cupola. That, that is, I do think that that's inconsistent with the look of the house. It sticks up there. It's spring light in. Would you rather see skylights? No, no. but I don't know if that's... Well, that's, that's I don't want to see... <laughs> I'm not sure I want to see the cupola. It just seems like an afterthought just sits out there. It's true, she had a very low slung look, mm -hmm. Barbara, her house. I hear you, what you need, so I don't think it would, but I think it, it's unfortunate. Christine, you have comments? No, I, I don't have any objections to this plan. Jeff, do, uh, Jeff, you have any issues with the cupola? No, n not, not really, especially given where the house is set. Right. I, I, I understand in terms of the purity, of yeah. your design, and I very much respect Anne's um, uh, history of the house and desire to keep it 
uh, exactly as it was, but I personally don't find the cupola, again, especially given where it is, um, to be out of line. You know, in lo it's going to be how high, Brian? Three feet high. Well, that's Not to the high. top of the roof, but the cupola itself. It looks like it's all of 28 feet. Two. 28. Two feet, four two, feet. Two, two, three feet. foot four to the top of the roof of it. I think in the scheme of things, it's, it doesn't detract from the house um, or from the, uh, in fact, the, the lines, the existing north elevation seems to me to be pretty plain. But that was the idea. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. uh, so are we in a position where we can move and close this application for written decision? Jeff? I feel like the judge is on chopped. Yes. Do you know who? Yes. I'm, I'm fine. Yes. Sometimes that's what we feel like. <laughs> Susan? I guess so. Christine? I'm fine with this. All right. Therefore, because um, it's an historic district, requires written decision by council. At this time, we have the consensus of the board to move further. We'll close the application for written decision, which uh, will be prepared hopefully at our next meeting. Before you do that, I just want to make sure, Brian, yeah. you, you wanted your oh, clients your people, to speak? If it was necessary, but I don't feel that it's necessary. It's up to them. It's up to you. It's up to you. <laughs> you have the approval, but if you want to come up and just speak. No, we don't really need it. It's not necessary. Other than to say that we are preservationists. I'm on the board of New York Landmarks. We are what, very, they got to come up, very, sir. <laughs> they're not preserved. Uh, Mark Chappelle, one of the two owners of, of, of Hill Street. We've lived there for over 30 years in the front house for 65. We bought this to preserve it because it is a jewel. We intend to keep it as structurally intact as we possibly can. We've done this with every home we've ever owned and still own. And so that, what Anne is expressing as what's important to her is probably three to four times more important to us <coughs> because this is the way we operate. And that's why we use Brian as our architect because he is a classical architect. We wanted to minimize the change as much as possible, yet make the house livable today. A one-bedroom house is very difficult, you know, in, in that context. So that's, I, don't, I could say a lot more, but it's running late, so I'm not going to. Thank you. But back to you. Thank you. All right. Uh, motion to cl uh, close the application for written decision by council. I make a motion that we close the application of 5 to Angus LLC at 471 Hill Street for Written decision by our council. Motion by Christina. Is there a second? I second the motion. Second by Susan. All in favor? Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm not. Concludes our historic applications for this evening. Our first application, non historic. Uh, this board rec recommended that the applicant uh, go back to the. Uh, 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 I'll go to the uh, zoning board for uh, reconsideration for the original plan, oh, um, and there, this. Do you want me to no, not, it doesn't matter because it's already it's been adjourned. Um, for unless you have an update, uh, you were supposed to. There was supposed to be a specific referral from you to a letter the, was supposed to go. Yes, out. I thank you. Did second. it happen? I don't know. I, mean, I believe Bo was working was on it. Do you know? Up. Specific. I haven't seen it, but I know Bo drafted a letter. <laughs> the zoning board of appeals. <laughs> the whole idea <laughs> was to send it. Sort of well, he's counsel for the board of appeals, isn't he? On this case, yes. Oh. Oh. No, no, no. But it was the language was important because the whole idea was to go back with your blessing. Okay. Um, he's not I here to represent that. Oh, I know. I know. I know. So, I have you have something? You have the letter? No, no, I have. <laughs> you're supposed to draft the letter and then you guys. Is that the letter? Is that the letter? Nope. We were supposed to see it before. Well, no, yeah. we don't have the letter. You sure you don't have the letter? We don't have the letter. So it went skiing or something. Oh, it does matter where he is. It? It's just that he doesn't have, have the letter. Oh, maybe it doesn't. I wouldn't see it. Yeah. No, it's probably been drafted yet. Okay. okay. Sorry. Yeah. So we, we hold on the original adjournment. Next application, please. But, um, could somebody ask me to draft the next meeting? Thanks. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Is there a way to. Uh, well, if he returns to we'll get The big win. Okay. Next application, please. Um, the next application is Village for Bellows at 33 Bellows. You have to try it the other way. Go ahead and do it. I don't know if you did.
plans you're giving us now, have they been altered from what's in the plan? So it's the first time we're seeing this. Yes. Um, I'm Chris Burnside, um, owner of Village Fellows. Sorry? Yeah, Ian Dios. Village Fellows. Let's go ahead. So this is our third um, attempt to get the plans that we proposed um, for new construction on 33 Bellows. Um, the first set of plans we, um, we submitted were rejected for several reasons. I think, um, if you want me to repeat them, I think, you know, you know second. So the second set, we basically made the changes from your first objections, um, which you seem satisfied with, except for one um, issue, you felt that the um, roof was a little um, heavy, is, I think were the words you said. Um, so I think the gables in the roof, yeah. the gables in the roof just seem heavy. Yeah. yeah. So side. what we did is um, basically just made it transparent. We, I can't. Um, um, right here is the the issue in particular that you were worried about. So we we it opened it up. Out. Gave it a kind of a lighter area of feeling, and then, um, an overhang. And then we showed what the um, what the um, the south elevation would look like, along with the other the rear and the side. That is on the the side of a parking lot for the medical center. Mm -hmm. So you create a little uh, recessed. Right, which will actually be nice. It'll get some more light into the bedroom. Um, you. I'm sorry? That was there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's more open. Um, and you, in, instead of the, you only have the, uh, I'm going to say the, you still have the clip gable, which is the opposite side of the, uh, the balcony, which I would say is the east side. It's not loud. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. East side, east side of parcel. Um, I believe that is the east side. Okay. Uh, but you're now. Are you? Are you encroaching on the pyramid? No, I'm not in, within the pyramid at all. You're not at all. No, we have actually. From the first set, we dropped the um, the floor joist into the foundation and brought it down eight inches. We did a split sill foundation and then we lowered the second floor. Um, the second floor ceiling heights we lowered another eight inches, but that was never the issue. We were well below the height restriction. Right. Uh, Jeff, comments? Look, I, I still find it top heavy. Um, and so creating a, a window in there and still having the clip gables, I thought you were going to come back with something more like this, uh, but it's apparent that's not in your plans, nor will you do it. So I'm sort of betwixt, well, I'm not betwixt in between. Uh, I'm not particularly in favor of the design, so, any, but I'm not going to argue it any further. I may not vote for it, so. Um, Susan, comments? I think it's an improvement. Uh, I have some of Jeff, Jeff's sentiments, but I wouldn't block the application. Christina? Um, it's a difficult lot, and I have no objection to it. All right. um, your objective would be uh, the neighboring prop parcel, which is a medical center. I don't care. I don't think they would mind to be any privacy issues <laughs> or concerns from a medical center. So I have no further objection of the application. I think you've um, made some of the uh, modifications that this board has asked for. Um, you know, there's no, uh, there's no such thing as perfection. Right. The design and the, the, the like and the details that the applicant is looking for. The bottom line is it is it in keeping with the community or area? I believe this design does. So, do you have anything further? Any public comment on the application? Um, it seems that we have the. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, and I will, I will. I mean, in terms of compatible, yeah, it is. Is it? You make a good point. Is it perfect? And again, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, so don't, don't take it personally. Although you no, I, I don't take it. I don't take it personally. <laughs> I actually took. You know, I have it, another. I had another 
side that I just whacked the whole side and just came top heavy. It just seemed like it was missing. Okay, so we have the consensus of the board overall. There's no public comment on the application. The motion would be to approve the application as submitted. As, I'm sorry. With the old, old, what we, 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 we're going to approve the application as uh, 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 with, uh, re sorry, re re approve the application based on rendering received uh, February 12th, 2018. I made that motion, you can second. Second. It's motion by Curtis, second by Christina. All in favor, Christina? Okay. Aye. <laughs> Susan, Susan, yes. Jeff? Aye. And Curtis is an aye. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Next application, please. The next application is Robert McCain and Joan Schott at Kalowski Street. I kind of like this. Someone's notes uh -oh. right here. Yeah, we don't know who's there. They'll be back. They will be back. They will be back. Good evening. Which way should these face? They, need they to should face, face us. Back. There yep. you go. Perfect. Do you have small plans? What's that? Do you have small plans, Brian? No. It's just part of the checklist. I didn't know. Part of the checklist at the building department. I also request that there be a smaller set of plans. I have one if you want to look at it. It's just easier for us, but since you have it on the board there, okay. since you, sir, since, sir, since you have it on the board there, we can look at your presentation on the board. Um, what you are showing us here is what we have in our file, correct? Yes. What was the question? I didn't know. Oh, Tom. That's all right. I should have had, I should have had sets of these for the boards. But no one told me. Here's a small set you can pass around. The Watch same out. thing. Mm -hmm. Here, look at this one. <clears throat> you want this? Yeah, yeah. I, I, actually, actually. I've seen it. Yeah. That's the old one. Proceed. My name is Fred Smith. I'm the architect for the project. And I also have a model you can look at if you would like. That's, I, you, you want to, well, you, you put so much effort into it. Yeah. You can hand, it. hand it that way. Nope. Actually, <laughs> It's pretty durable. Okay. <laughs> Survey. Let's go see Okay, okay. Oh, you, I'm not asking you to push. Take your time. Thank you. Okay. Um, I looked at the design uh, and, and nice. like I said, very well uh, uh, planned out and designed. Um, my concern was the second story deck. Which Understood. Is, which, anytime we have some concerns with second story decks, it's always about privacy. That's and why we squeeze it as tight as we could to the middle of the lot. We squeeze the deck right in the middle. If you want to hand me the model, I could show you. Well, you can see it's 40 feet, five to the west, and 40 feet to the east so from the property so lines. Far away the decks, the edges of, of the decks. Line of sight. Are you yeah, creating that's, are there any other type of uh, screening, or bushes, hedging? On this side, there's a pretty pronounced hedge, especially here. Here, it's maybe 20 or so feet. Here, it's 30 or more. Here there's a varying height of hedge, where probably here is the low point. There's a building here, so that is kind of blocked. So all in all, I felt it was pretty comfortable. The, given that it's an extra, extra large lot, almost a double lot for that neighborhood, our setbacks, and especially the scale of the property, was pretty reasonable given the distance, 40 to 50 feet, to side yards. You know? So you're not proposing any further screening? Mm -hmm. No. Unless you'd like some, I don't see where there'd be the necessity for Where's it. Where's the next house directly behind this thing? Behind the big hedge here. I don't even know where it is. I don't. It's way back here somewhere. But these, that's hundreds of feet, so. I'm not so much concerned about the rear lot as I am the adjacent, side, the yeah, adjacent absolutely. lot. Uh, no, I, I, I explained that to the client, but I had figured with the, with the width of the lot, 
being extra wide in the narrowness of the, the house, we've kept it within you know, its footprint, except for the porches. But, but those uh, houses are pretty tight on that street. This one is exceptionally wide. Right, but the, the ones that are a few down the street that are pretty tight. The side ones, though. So the which ones is the to subject the, house? No. Well, I'm going to give you a. Is this the subject house? Yes. I, I know the house, and I know that the. I mean, now you're looking at it. It's, it's not. It's very. Um, uh, the, the, the hedges are very What's that? light open. and very open. Um, there's no leaves on it. However, when I'm looking at the height, there is a substantial um, uh, line of sight from, especially at a higher uh, vantage point. Right. Um, me personally, I would want to see uh, at least some type of tree or something to Absolutely. obstruct the view. Again, it's not the neighbors that you're you're putting something new to the site. Therefore, you're creating privacy concerns. Right. Uh, it's your responsibility to mitigate. Sure, I'd be happy to. I, I've found also that it's more of a uh, it's, it's it's more difficult than a way to be on the deck because you're silhouetted than to be in the yard below, off in the greenery. So you feel like you're more pronounced when you're up there. Yeah, exactly. Well, than exactly. than the other way around, which most yeah. arguments well, are placed on they'll see down into my yard so, where they're silhouetted up in the sky. Yeah. So, so uh, on one of the pictures, pictures, excuse me. Uh, you can see a deck at uh, the house on 32 uh, North, is it? North Woolley? North Woolley, 32 North Woolley. Now that house on the east is bordered by a row of arborvitae that stand at least 25 feet. Right. And obviously they're evergreen, whereas your property has some deciduous hedges. Yeah. And, and in one case right and, here. And when I look at those pictures, I don't see a lot of screening so even my neighbors uh, I, would, I would they will want to no question especially along here here this is pretty well developed on the west side but this east side is is they don't even have any vegetation on the their side of the fence so I, I, would I would want to see what your what your plan what your plant planting plan is to mitigate for privacy issues i have no issues with the design okay. i have no issues with the architecture i don't uh, i think when it's done it's going to be a, a fun fun house yep um, Thank you. My concern is just privacy, Would that be a supplemental? especially since the deck is so pr um, pronounced, large, so yeah. such yeah. a large deck. You created a deck for entertainment, which is what most people would want in the deck. However, in create, creating that entertainment space, you have to be uh, considerate. Absolutely. considerate to the neighbor. Now, <laughs> could that be as a supplemental submission that? No. no, no. So we have. To, I, I wouldn't. I personally, I can't. I can't answer for the other boards. I'm speaking right. independently. So I would feel uncomfortable voting on the application, not knowing what your plan is. So we need a planting plan. Correct. Right. Okay. And, and specific in terms plan. of screening plan. The, the type of plant, also, the, the height going in, the growth. The deck is so large. Yeah. Uh, it, the deck is large, and you're mitigating from, uh, and you're creating the uh, necessary screening, um, especially since right there in the photo, I see a deck <laughs> from two doors down. I get it. However, you're presenting an application. I don't know what that application, who approved it. I don't even know if it was approved. Um, sometimes in the oh. past, we've approved second story decks to be not accessible. We don't know what happens right. after people get keys. Um, so, so, I guess it would only be in this range because visual somewhere anywhere around here but considerably focusing on that is what I would do right there these I believe are trying but could be supplemented um, in order to not propel this thing further is there any guidance you could give me as to what you'd like uh, and where. Otherwise, I'll be just right. so know, throwing my, ideas out. My, my two cents in terms of guidance is to look at that property at 32 uh, North Woolley and look at those row of arborvitaes and look how they stand. Right. They're all along the east side. Uh, and I would dare say that I would not be, I would not parse the property so carefully into line of sight because when you stand on that deck and if you're a, a whopping five foot six like I am, uh, <coughs> you know, I can see over all the hedges right. that currently exist. So, I doubt it here, but definitely here. So 
Uh, we have lots of room to the what, side what, to plan. What I can share so. with you is the chairman is usually very, very uh, circumspect and hesitant to grant second floor debts. Yeah. So oh, no, the, I know, the, I know. The fact that he's even I believe me, I brought it up with the client. This, I did. He's making so, me sound like a tyrant. Listen, no, no. But, <laughs> but because of the with There's an alternative. Be there's less. all an alternative, too. So, it's it's re, maybe even reducing the amount of debt. I think you should reduce the amount because of Because you're creating a, 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 you're creating a large entertainment That's space. How would too. you do it? We're, That's the applicant's all responsibility and the architect's responsibility Just to, push to it figure. In. I, I, I agree think that's with the planting. A bad idea. You could get a lot of people on that. But, day. Yeah. yeah. Well, talk from the bedroom, I but I guess you could. And umbrellas and yeah, no. I mean, What's the purpose is, of the deck? Is yeah, it, is it's, it's, cover, it's off the porch, porch, It's a covered below, porch as well as a and it's deck really off not the bedroom because it's off the yeah, master bedroom. Yeah, the master bedroom. Master bedroom. There's no other oh, space okay. up there. Yeah, but you, yeah. You, you said earlier there yeah. was. I, I thought I heard the word party come out of your no, mouth at one point. No, I never said that. I'm sorry. So the deck. They're not the. They wouldn't have a party up there. The access to the deck is to a bedroom. Yes. Why so prominent? It just fits the footprint of the deck. So, I mean, it's a design it's issue. Over the yeah. top of the... It's but the design is porch. basically... But that just sticks out from your house just because there's... You put cobblestone or whatever you're putting down. Well, the alternative is not to have a deck at all. And there's a... Well, the covered porch. The covered porch. Where's the covered... There's a covered porch. That's yeah. the porch underneath is covered. Right. By this. We have to be, well, it could go it long. Is that it could go lengthwise, no? The front one? Well, I tried to keep it as narrow to the center as possible so that the, the near property lines would not be affected. But you have a covered porch there that's so much more appropriate so on that side. The, the, the other thing is, you can either, there are options. One you've been given, well, I see your hand up. One, just give a second. Yeah, I'm definitely. One, no, 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 just hear, hear me. Okay. Hear, I know, but hear me out for a second. It, so there the are. The is here, so let's. Uh, well, let's, I know, no, yeah. but let, let me just lay out a, a couple of options. Um, one is the screening. Yes. Uh, two is not to have a deck at all. Okay. It's, it's you know, you don't have to have it. Uh, and three is not to have access to the deck at all. I'm, I'm and, and, and make it purely decorative. I'm not, not going to agree to that one. I'm you don't have to, but I'm yeah. saying those, uh, all I'm saying is those are options the applicants can consider. Let's, let's, let's hear from the applicant. The good evening, applicants good evening here. board members, yes. respectfully. Your name, um, your name for the record, sir. This is, your name this for the record. my name's Tom Roscoe. I live in uh, Sag Harbor. However, I was raised in this house. And I have a lot of information about history about surrounding areas. Um, the surrounding property to the west has 30-foot spruce trees, as it shows in the pictures between the houses, so we can't even hardly see from the roof line of the other house from the backyard. The pictures I submitted were pictures of five pictures doing a panoramic view on a 12-foot ladder where the proposed deck would be. And that would give you the parameters of what's visual and how far away it is. It's far away. Oh, sorry. The uh, adjacent house to the west is a double lot, and the house is on the west lot, mostly. So it's far away. The house on the corner on North Woolley was built in 1900 when there was no, no rules and right on the property line. And just a few years ago, you approved of that to be built. So there's screening everywhere. I planted, a, I planted a head when my grandfather, when I was five years old, on the south property line, and it's growing. The neighbors have chosen to raise their hedges on the east side, and it's now almost 15 feet high, and continue to grow. Where are they? And all the property adjacent has screening on it, beyond belief. So in the summertime, you don't see anybody. And at the same time, right next to the pool, is a 25-foot, 30-foot round apple tree, which you can't see to the southwest. Yeah. So there's so much vegetation there and, and screening, and there's a Japanese red maple here, one here, and it's so much screening there's not going to be any visual well, in the, so in the, the yard. The challenge is you submitted photos Where are those in photos? files. Didn't you just take the photos back? 
No, we didn't have any photos. You, I you submitted them. Yeah, you submitted photos from the vantage point vantage of where the point deck, deck would the be. deck, because I had a 12-foot step. That was there. compelling enough for us to see that there was some. But there isn't. It's, well, it's, well, I'm it's, saying is that, you gotta hear what, guys, just bear with me one second, okay? We are taking a snapshot view of your application. So the information that you submit to us is what we use to make a determination. If you feel that there's a different point of view or a different, uh, different viewpoint that's not being shown, saying it's one thing, but now we have photos that are showing something entirely different. From you're, what you, I understand, okay. and you're seeing growth in progress over the last five years since these new owners purchased it from my parents. They've doubled the size of the hedges just in five years by letting them grow and not cut the tops. So the photos that we have in file, when were they taken? Or what? The photos that are in file right now, when were they taken? A week ago, well, about two weeks ago. And those are the photos that were taken to snapshot view, and that was making a determination by us that there's some, there could be possibly some uh, privacy concerns. Which I we're agree saying with. that and there I, are ways of mitigating for Yeah, them. which I believe so. Given just right here, I can see where the channels of Vista are problematic. So I, I could talk with a good landscape horticulturalist and get the evergreen. I prefer evergreens because they're, they're too, year round. Especially considering the amount of space there. Now, and I understand where it's coming from. It's the, the, uh, the, the exit is coming from a bedroom. You understand that. Um, however, it still leaves an opportunity, a possibility of people not that they would go to your bedroom. However, it's still overwhelming. Uh, it would be easier for us to look at this being reduced um, then it would be some, something for private use. This is more for entertainment use. And that's what we're having some concerns or issues with. So if you want to present a case, photos, and show evidence, even line of sight, of what your proposed deck will be once what's well, the, Yeah, the planting. And you're going to also planting present schedule. Yeah. a planting schedule right. with height. specimens, height, not what it's going to grow at, but right. when installed, right. what height. Absolutely. And that will help us to give a better determination. I think it'll, it'll sway us, but it'll help us get a better determination on whether we feel it's suitable or not. Okay. Okay. That's okay. it. Planting. Okay. Any other questions? That's it. Should be good. We need some time to work on this. We have mm -hmm. the information. And you'll be back at another meeting with that. Uh, yeah, as soon as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll talk with some folks tomorrow about planting. Get okay. That. So what, how often are the meetings? Every two, every two weeks. weeks. Oh, great. Is there so any the next way? two weeks. Is there any way I can get on for two weeks from now? Yeah, you're right. automatically on. So oh, now you're okay. a part of the agenda. So that you understand, you're part of the much agenda. Better. You, you, <laughs> tonight, you're going to ask for an adjournment so that you can prepare okay. yourself for the next meeting with right. all of your files and your information. Um, I, I would come back with as much information as you possibly sure. can to give us a, another additional snapshot of what your proposed, uh, I guess, line of sight would be. Very good. Is there, just so that I understand and so the records reflect it, are there any issues with the architectural design or anything? No, I no, think it's a cute house. Hmm. Okay. Great. So it seems there's no issue with the design. The only issue we have a concern that Great. this board has had is with the second I agree. Story. I agree. Okay. I did, I should have, I'm sorry, I should have tried to think ahead and do that because it wouldn't have taken that much. Lastly, consulting. Reduce size. Plants. So when you come back before the board oh, yes. with additional information, make sure that they're re reduced size plans so each board member independently can look at it. Right. It's kind of hard to see that with. Understood. Uh, That's easy enough. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Who, who's going to be pre who's going to be preparing the the specimen, the design? Are you doing what? I, I would probably. I could maybe get a consultant on board or take consultation and do it myself and have the, the proper Latin terms and whatnot. It's really going to be roses. As long as the certified Arbor landscaper is providing, or certified oh, uh, uh, surveyor is placing that and properly placing with setbacks and so forth. Oh, so the surveyor. Know, okay. So it's properly, properly. Uh, don't forget the house. Yeah. <laughs> it can be. Yeah. It can be. It can be. Yes. On his plan, yeah. it stands. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. yeah, it has to be. All right. No further questions? And you're asking this board to adjourn for preparation at the next meeting. I would like to do that. All right. I make well, a motion that we adjourn the application of Robert McCabe and Joan Schott on Pulaski Street to our next meeting. Motion by Christina. Is there a second? I second the motion. Second by uh, Susan. All in favor? Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you. Next up, and last application for the evening. We have um, Robert Ra 
2014 the Halsey Trust on Halsey Park Gates. <laughs> you waited all night for this, huh? Yeah. Yep. There it is. And that's just why we're going to have another conversation at the end of this yeah. meeting. Um, your name for the record, sir? Phil Watson. Uh, driver gates on the parcel. Uh, what's the transparency? Do you know the percentage of transparency? Over 100%. I'm sorry? Over 100%. Can't be over 100%. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on, it's, it's four and a half inches open, three inches closed. So it's over 50%. So it depends. Well, it depends how you calculate it. <laughs> well, if it's 100%, the gate wouldn't exist. <laughs> there there wouldn't be so. one. <laughs> is it electric? It's a force field. Yes, it is. Oh. It will be. All right, so it's greater uh, okay. than 50% transparency? Yes. All right. Um, gates are made out of mahogany. Mahogany. Uh, mahogany. Any lanterns? Any posts on the post? Uh, uh, there's two. There's two posts as shown. Each post is uh, steel wrapped in mahogany as well. Okay. And the height of the fence, just for the record? It's approximately 72 inches, maybe 74. Board members, any questions? Any issues? No. 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 Right. Uh, any public comment on the application? No. Motion to approve. <laughs> I make a motion that we approve the application you of Robert Law at the for Hosey Trust on Hosey Park. A motion by Christina. Is there a second? I second the motion. Second by Susan. All in favor. Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm now. Thank you. Thank you, board. Thank you. Have a good evening. Just you too. Okay. All right. Um, this actually segues really well. Um, <laughs> True. <laughs> the, the, Concerns I had, and I've addressed it with the uh, trustee as well as with council, is that we seem to be spending the majority of our time on lengthy and more controversial applications in the historic district. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it probably would be um, more suited and, and more respectful to reverse our uh, agenda and hear the non historic applications first. Um, so it would be the order would be signs, non-historic applications, historic applications, and to follow. I think right. it would be you, easier. Do you think they could put the driveway gates first in the non-historic? Um, well, the applications are received um, uh, when, when, re when received. Um, uh, so they stay in order of it's received. I don't believe that for a second. We Sorry. Can, hear, me, hear me out. Hear me out. We have the discretion at any time to yeah. look at the agenda and say, <laughs> well, we see okay. that there are four or five driveway gates in the yeah. non-historic. Let's hear those applications just like we do yeah. when there's a written decision and they're not in sequential yeah, order. Sense, we say, well, let's hear the oh. written decision. So we always have the yeah. discretion of the board to do so at the meeting. Okay. Um, does, does the board all agree with uh, changing the... Yes. yes. Okay. Um, no objection? Well, may I have a little input? Yes. <laughs> Bo and I Bad talked... Bo, <laughs> thanks. Bo and I talked a couple things. One is uh, we both agree that this is a good move and you have the full authority to do so. Uh, one thing that is typical, Robert's Rules of Orders, new, usually it's old business than new business yes. and it should be that way with respect to and I think you do that with respect to your historic and non-historic. Our only suggestion is I guess that's what Jeff just brought up is why wouldn't you put gates as a totally separate thing. Um, they seem to be even in the historic less controversial you could separate them within oh, that, that category but that do problem. those first. Not a bad idea. So this gentleman, even so, you know, wouldn't have to wait halfway through the process. So it would be signs, gates. And then oh. get into historic or non-historic, or non-historic first, and then and historic. historic. But within the historic and non-historic, you would still do old first. business, then new business. And, and another thought, the zoning board does this, is if you do have cases on that are for decision only, uh, with no further discussion, they do Rarely. their decisions at the beginning. Yes. So if a party is sitting here and just wants to know how you decide, they don't have to wait for the to, whole agenda. So you could do we that don't also. That much, do we? Um, we try to. Um, we try to lump them in, in uh, if there are three or four different written decisions. Um, but you're absolutely correct. Maybe we should hear just those another thought applications to, first, mm -hmm. just to get them out of the way. So that you're not really decisions. hearing them. All you would we're be doing voting. is deliberating and voting. Correct. So. We're not even deliberating. We're just yeah, you're voting. Yeah, not necessarily. But you, all, right. all you're doing is really voting on the written decision so, that you okay. have. So we'll empower the billing department at the next meeting. Uh, to do two things, A, um, to reverse the order of our agenda, to have the, uh, the non-historic first, I'm well, sorry, to have the, the signs, signs first, right. first, 
the non-historic, and then um, uh, I thought you were going to do driveway. Yeah, yes. You want to do the driveway historic and non-historic together? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. They're driveway gates. I, yeah. As long as you label issues. what's historic or not, and you'll have a written decision. Sometimes you're gonna, the gate gate only part. Well, this would be this would be this would be for gates. Gates only if it's only if the gate is separate. Yeah, yeah. It's independent. Okay. Separate. So I agree with you. So the 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 nature of the order. I'm sorry. The order will be uh, signs. Driveway gates, non-historic, historic. Right. Yes. Well, Old business. Yeah. All right. So and, we'll and then we, it's 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 uh, signs, gates. No, we we just had the consensus historic, of the board. We had that discussion. Old, old, new, and then historic, old, new. Yes. So. Okay. So well, I'll discuss with the building department and make sure that we have that as part of uh, the. I'll uh, do the same thing. You do the same. Two heads are better than one. Uh, second thing is before we get into the minutes. Are we um, just as I thought I heard a motion being to. You want us to give a motion yes. to. Give? Motion to. All right. Motion to change the agenda. I make a motion that we change the agenda as agreed. Shall I specify it? I think we've done well. I um, second the motion. Motion by Christina was seconded by Susan. All in favor? Christina. Aye. Susan. Aye. Jeff. Aye. And Curtis as well. Uh, another point of conversation before we get into the actual minutes that were received. In past times, we've um, been able to communicate with uh, either uh, the building department or with uh, Antoinette independently about changes. Um, any changes to minutes should be an open forum discussion, and that way people know what was drafted and what we're voting on, any changes. I just think that it's a more transparent process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, instead of sending in the email I said or the applicant said or anyone said, we should have that discussion. That way the board as a whole agrees with what changes are being made. Right, but usually if someone has a change, then she says that somebody said uh, misspellings or something. Yeah. And then we agree. But anyway, that's how yeah, we did it before. That's yeah, fine. It, and it also opens up the opportunity for us to, you know, it, it may uh, spark something else that may have to be altered, changed. Right. It creates dialogue with the school. Okay, that's fine. Our applications are becoming a lot more legal. Litigious. And uh, therefore, we have to be more specific and open minded, but we also have to be more specific on uh, pro process and procedures. We have emails and texts and everything being foiled. We must make sure that we're transparent with uh, how we're operating our board. Does the board uh, disagree? Have any comment? No. No, no I'd like. To. Yes, please. Okay. Please. Uh, therefore, there were minutes that were uh, drafted from January 22nd. I know that there was some changes requested. Yes. Um, you want to discuss I'd the like changes? I'd like to have it entered into the record on 472 First Neck Lane that the new plans, because what happened was they, John Bennett just came and launched into you know, who was going to be here, and if you look at your record. Mm -hmm. And I would like somehow it put into the record that new plans were put, in, put on our desks, or new plans were introduced. So you're saying, you're saying the minutes right now do not reflect? They don't say that They don't at reflect all. That, the, that the applicant at the meeting. appeared and submitted okay. plans. They weren't the even. Someone put Diane, I believe, at our desk, so it wasn't even visual that they were submitting them, which I really resent. Yeah, that's, I'm not sure that's worth it. So Mr. Bennett acknowledged that when he came and presented no, and said started. he didn't say anything. So no, they were already asked. submitted what prior to the meeting? What, what happened was um, we received plans, and just like tonight, I asked, are these plans that we have not seen uh, earlier, or are, there, are these new plans that we have not seen? And at that time, John said, um, some, some of it. Some of them. So that was the, that was the record. It You're trying to clarify on. that decision, right? Yes. I, mean, I mean, obviously, going forward, particular controversial, you might say, Mr. Bennett, uh, so what's new? What was submitted? When was it submitted? Uh, only you know, you know, you're not you're talking primarily the the, the controversial cases, which right. you know are right. controversial that you want to be very careful on. Obviously, some of these others, but you want to continue to ask. It's a good question, but that one particular, I think you you want clarity for. Well, I, so. I, we are often faulted for dragging our heels, and most of the time, it has nothing to do with us. We can't know in advance, and also I believe the public has a right to see. No. So what you're going to do is, do you have some suggestions for a change to the minutes? Oh, I have one. Uh, well, the, uh, the, there was a request by Susan, no, uh, reflecting didn't. on after she reviewed the uh, the, the tape um, that reflected my questioning, uh, uh, receiving of information. It was the information received this evening, the first time this board has received it or seen it. Um, John Bennett's response was. Um, uh, yes, 
Then he said, kind of. So that was the... He the, said that was, some of it. Well, some of it, yes. So I said... Could you add to 472 case minutes after the first sentence where you mentioned Bennett's announcement of who is going to speak? Curtis Highsmith asked, was this just given to us this evening? I, I think you should say, were these plans just given to us this evening? Is that what he said? Was that yeah, what that's said? what. Was this just given? So, well, but no, so, but her things aren't verbatim. Well, well it's a summary, but you, you want summary. to be accurate, yeah, but you don't so want to add something. These plans just given to said. us this evening. Does the board feel? Does the board all agree with the the additions that have been recommended? Well, I yes. do just want to say yes. one thing. That when I was in the building department today, I've been twice today. There was stuff in the file that was new that wasn't pointed out to me. So it was in the file, mm -hmm. and I asked for what was new, and Diane gave me some, but some was in there that was new that she didn't. Mm -hmm. So I think it's our responsibility to go through the file and look for it. But it not on there. the day of the meeting. I'm not doing that. That's not fair Th to me. You were yeah. there on the day of the meeting. Th this is a different. It's not my job. I, I think, it needs I, to be well, within it, it's reasonable It's partly your time. job, but I don't think it's unreasonable for <coughs> you to request of the applicant or any other parties um, to, to know what was submitted to the record so that you know what you've got to look at. In addition to what you just heard, you, you, know, you need to go back and look at the record. It might be a document someone submitted earlier for or against that you <coughs> want to at least raise the question. There's a question that may arise out of those documents. So to a certain extent, and this goes to an issue, is, is the timing of submissions. Yes. Now, you can say all you want that you want people to make the submissions before a certain time of place, <coughs> but they're going to walk at the podium and hand you things anyway. I think we so the question is always, is what are you going to do with the information, oh. and can you digest it in that moment, or do you need additional time? I think time? that's in a tremendous imposition. I don't work that way. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I, 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 never, I never like to have absolute uh, direction on it. Because, for example, there are certain situations and certain applications that are not controversial that people come up with just hard to do a blanket rule. Right. I but do you've got to be sensitive to the more to the, controversial exactly. applications. How many of those controversial applications do we have? We have maybe one application a month um, out of the between 15 to 20 applications that we have on, on a, a monthly basis. I don't think it warrants us to have an absolute rule for we'll all applicants that there be a time date stamp. We have the discretion as a board, just, hey, I'm not looking at it and I'm not hearing it. Um, because I need time to, to review the application. But don't you think there has to be a reasonable period of time? Also, I mean, what are we doing here if not to allow the public, who also own property, to comment if necessary to protect their own property? How many of those have the assumption. following two weeks? Yeah. What? They have the following two weeks because yeah, this is the last bit of information. We have to decide that. So, so that we have the discretion at this board to say. For the entire but two if, weeks but until people the next think meeting. we're not. Doing it on time, no, they if they, it comes. Susan, I, I, I mean, yeah, this is not this is not airtime for this. Um, people are not going to like what we do. Period. I get <laughs> so, it, but I personally don't want the imposition. Well, I think it's, it, that it's a thinkless the position. The standard should not be that it goes in the day of the meeting. Can, can I? Say, when several months ago, we said that we would the advise Monday. the building department. Department, I believe, we said what was a reasonable amount of time for submissions, and we said ten days. Do you remember that several months ago? I and I don't know if that's been implemented as no, a policy. It's, we, that's not a policy. It, it's, it's it's requested of the applicant, mm -hmm. any applicant who brings information in, to do so ten days prior to the meeting, uh, to, to the next meeting, giving every oppor every, uh, every opportunity for both the community, for us right. individually, objectives, or even just people who are just interested well, has to review. It. That's not a hidden. That's not a, a hard rule, and I don't. I really personally don't believe that it should be, because there there were several applications this evening that just came up with new applications that were not uh, controversial. They should should they be penalized for the one or two controversial applications that take up this type of uh, time and space? Yeah. I don't think so. I agree with you, and I, I think we can use our discretion prudently. Uh, and I, as you once you said a couple of sessions ago to John Bennett, look to John. If you hand it in late, we're not going to. It's going to cost you time because we're not going to make a decision on it. So I think we have that ability. When we when we start making that a hardened rule, that a hardened rule, I think especially that. for controversial applications, especially when we receive uh, three inches of paper, right, 
Um, so, so the question I have that remains is, uh, has the building have we communicated to the building department, and has the building department in turn communicated to applicants? You should have all your information in 10 days before. It's been uh, communicated uh, okay. to the building department. If they're enforcing, I don't know. No. Gotcha. Well, I would think that that has been communicated to both Bo and I, and we are looking at some of those standards. And, and one of those, I, I looked at another community that has adopted similar standards, and they've sort of had the dilemma you can see, the, mm -hmm. what you just discussed. The, the issue that the way they take care of it is they advise they'd like to have submissions by a certain date, and they advise the public that and that's applicants or otherwise that submissions after that they run the risk of you know going an adjournment ahead. and so on so that they know ahead of time right. look don't have an expectation that you're going to have the hearing closed or a decision made if you bring in a new information yeah. so right. that's that's the way they do it because the nature of the beast mm -hmm. particular in a small community like this is you're never going to you're going to have people walking up to the podium for or against giving you new information at the hearing. And, and that's a good point, for so and against. You have objectives you, you coming up. You can't stop that. So whether it came in at 4 o'clock or whether it came in <laughs> four, 10 days earlier or you got it at the podium, the question is, is and I, I, rely, I have all faith in this board and future boards that you'll be able to take a reasonable approach and be able to digest and determine whether you're going to close the hearing because I just got this information, it's a simple gate modification, or right. it's a controversial application, and yes, you know, we need to carefully weigh and balance all these issues, and we're going to adjourn this for all purposes. And I'll say this, we, have a, we, we are a, um, a resort community. A lot of our applicants, a lot of our homeowners don't live here year-round. Therefore, they are getting here on a Friday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon or even maybe Sunday night before. So we're not getting information just probably because it's not readily available because of where they're located. You've got to take that into consideration. And some of the stuff is not that but complex. To actually submit, you have to do it a month in advance. And people do toe the line for that, right? To get on the agenda. To get on, but you know, uh -huh. it goes to you know, a host of things. The other th topic we're looking at is is uh, looking application. at that initial completeness question of what information are we getting enough information like so this? that we're not chasing a survey or or whatnot. Right. But this one, you know, the question you, you had here with the landscape plan. plan, but you're not until you know what one. the issue is, you don't know to right. submit a landscape plan. Right. So. But right. I do feel it's a disservice. I personally don't. I I go to the the site, so then they add a thing, and then what, I'm supposed to have driven, gone to the building department, driven back over to the site? I mean, it's a ridiculous request. I don't work that way. I work on a schedule, and I want to know what's in the file, and I want to think about it. And so I don't personally, I don't want to look stupid. That's part of it. And I don't think you do, but you know, you got to remember the burden is on the applicant to prove to this board that they've met the standards. Right. And okay. if they well, haven't, you know, by the way, you, you know, the applicant is not required to do anything but other than submit the application. If they choose not to modify or adjust or provide more information to the board, they run the risk that your board is going to say, look, no. you haven't even met the basic standards for an approval. You haven't proven the case. So why, you know, they run that risk, obviously. So, you know, our job is to help educate them, number one, in, in that we're working with the building department on the application forms, not only here, but planning board and zoning board, particularly the zoning board. I, I see many applications, they come in with two sentences, give me a variance. <coughs> it has nothing to do with the five-part legal test and how they have addressed it and have even thought about it. Oh, so that, looking sorry. at your application similarly <laughs> is what sentence. are the standards <laughs> that you have to apply and have they given you the information you need. And, you know, certain architects that have been before this board before know that and know what you're looking for, like the gate standards. You know, a lot of people know about it, but then there's a lot of people that don't know about them. So uh, getting that information out to the applicants and the public will help this board, number one, so you don't do that. I have to chase around and ask all the time, do you have this, do you have some basic information? But you're still going to have that process in which, like this one, well, you know, the second floor deck, maybe the screening is needed, we need more information. That's still going to come up. Right, and you, nice. it's going to happen like it's you did. Happen. You're going to adjourn it to get the information. So, and, right. so we're, we're way off of the, the minutes oh, right. portion of it, the conversation about the minutes. So the minutes have now been reflected. They've been changed. Any objection to 
the additions or all, I'm sorry, the uh, corrections to the minutes. Do we have the language? Do you have the language? I have sure. a bunch of things written down. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we'll, just, uh, now specifically for those minutes. That would, yes, I did. You want me to read you what I wrote? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Hold on. I have a lot. Okay, Chair questioned Mr. Bennett if the information they were viewing was new information, and Mr. Bennett stated that some of it had been in the record and some was submitted tonight. That's fine. For this day, today, because it was submitted what? earlier that day. It was right? on our desk when we got here. It was and, I, and she is right. I did not know that that, I heard the conversation and I remember the conversation, but I didn't know that the papers were on, whereas a lot of times it's submitted to me, so I write. I don't think it should, I don't know who put it there, because I think the... The videotape of them submitting it is important. I didn't put it there, though. Personally. Well, I think this board should make a, 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 a right. habit of saying, getting it submitted, all, all what they're submitting but, to the record, but at least no, no, on I, the record. I, I, but that was, I didn't even know about it. it was I, I think that's incorrect. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think that's incorrect. I believe that paperwork was in the file. No, it wasn't. I, I didn't no, see it. I, I believe we pulled it out of the file. I, I do believe. Um, when I got here at the meeting, there was no paperwork on my desk. No information, no anything. Yes, there were. those plans were on each desk. I, I didn't see. I don't recall that. Okay, so well, then, I was either way, in the, it was submitted that day. It was, it was submitted that so day. That wing, it was in. submitted that day, whether it's it was oh, right. it or did. earlier, it it's that day, not necessarily. We can't right. confirm that well, it was I that don't day. I don't want to go into the semantics. It was that day. I mean, it, was it was one day. In that same day of the application. And everyone's okay with that language. Whatever. Okay. So I want a motion to approve the minutes as amended for January 22nd, 2018. I make a motion that we approve the minutes as the minutes for January 22nd. I said it. Okay. Okay. I second the motion. There's a motion by Christina. It was second by Susan. All in favor. Christina? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jeff? Aye. I'm an aye as well. And motion to close. I make a motion that we close this meeting of the Board of Architecture Review and Historic Preservation on February 12, 2018. Motion by Christina. Second? Uh, uh, Susan. Susan seconds it. All in favor. Aye. Christina? Aye. Susan? Jeff? Aye. Good night. Oh, good night.